but excessive and successive, excessive and accepted forms of public exploitation of animals is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> same thing with children. It's the same thing. So, yeah, thank you, Ringling Brothers, for because you had so much pressure put on you from the public. You, they didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? We are altruists, and we're just going to phase out these elephants and make them safe again. No, dude. You had so much bullshit coming at you. So many people threatening to sue you, to not go to your shows. That's why they changed it. It was pressure. So if you continue to put more pressure, they'll phase out lions, they'll phase out tigers, they'll phase out cats, they'll phase out chimps. And then they'll just be phased out. And it's not that I don't want kids to be able to see the circus. There are more tigers in captivity in Texas than there are in the wild, guys. I think it's probably time to stop exploiting animals like this. You know what I mean? Great question. Great question. You rock, man. Love you back. Our writers. <laughs> um, poof. I mean, Elena, yeah, obviously. Bonnie, yeah. yeah. Liz Forbes really, I'm gonna miss her. Liz Forbes really um, has changed him a great deal. And I'm grateful for that. And I think Marguerite's done such an amazing job with these really beautiful layered um, performances. But that last stuff that you did was just, uh, my heart, I mean, my throat yeah. was just closing like crazy. And if you think about it, the loss of a best friend, especially to someone who typically doesn't feel much about anything, um, it was really interesting to watch Damon step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and make that happen. And swallow his fears. And, you know, you really got to sort of, when you look at that flashback stuff, you really get a sense of, you get to see Damon. I, we never do flashbacks anymore. I don't know if it's just that it's a budget thing or they just can't seem to. I mean, all we do is like talk about spells and shit and never really get to go back and go back in these cool parts of time. I don't know why we don't do it, but it was so special to see Damon as a young man really before his heart was hardened by. Vampirism. Um, but I would say Liz Forbes probably. She really, Liz and Bonnie, for sure. And you. And you. The audience. You're the best. Um, I'm sure those guys, I haven't seen the film yet, I'm sure those guys have a blast. Um, it's a little difficult to do anything on a television schedule. You have to realize. I'm married to this show for six years, and that's nine plus months per year. Yeah. There are only 12 months a year. <laughs> so do you ever, I mean, it just, it's not feasible for almost anything. It's the blessing and the curse of being on a TV show. You have immense amounts of success. Um, you can't really do very much because, you know, no big studio, not even Warner Brothers. No big producers of any big films are actually going to put their movie on hold or sit in second position to Warner Brothers um, for a TV actors. It's just not going to happen. I wish them all the best. I'm sure that movie's crushing. I'm sure it's made so much money. Um, <laughs> you want to rehearse? <laughs> so, but hey, man, you know, I guess it could be a lot worse. Yeah. Um, Hey, you know, I appreciate that. Thanks, bro. Pleasure, man. Watch out for all these women. We're outnumbered, dude. Run. Hey, lady. Hi. Hey. Your only challenge is, is making it great in time. Time is your only challenge. Just like with anyone who's running a company, <laughs> or anything. Time. To get those shots, you want to get the great, the best performance, you want to get the best shots in the time you can do it. And I didn't want to run over because I gave you this opportunity and the last thing I wanted was 
our producers had to come call the studio and say, well, you know, we love Ian, but he was two hours late. Which two hours late, you know, it's like two hours cost the production of the yeah. grand. And it's so expensive. Yeah. So it ended up just being the greatest professional thing. Anyway, it's just the sorry, party foul. It ended up being the greatest experience ever. I, 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 you know, when I turn it in, once you turn it in as director, you sort of know control. They know what they're doing. And it's really a fun episode. And to go down this journey with this group of people, and God, it's just, it's really cool. Although I did screw up once. And our production coordinator had to knock on my door at 8 in the morning. I'm never late for anything. I forgot. <laughs> well, not when it comes to shooting. I mean, look, schedules and plans and shit just happen. When I had to get up, when I have to be on set, I keep, I'm on set. I forgot that I was shooting all day. I got used to being going in as a director. Yeah, you wake up, you have your breakfast, maybe you go to the gym for 20 minutes, maybe you just sit and pet the cats. You go over your shift for the day. You walk in the set. Your hair is a mess. <laughs> You have your hat on, you look like shit. I forgot that as an actor and a director, do this whole thing called hair and makeup, wardrobe. I mean, geez Louise. If I go back and think about it, I mean, honestly, I think. Probably David, because A, it's the only thing I remember playing. <laughs> And if I do this wrong, it's probably the only thing I'll ever play. <laughs> um, am I putting you to sleep? Yeah. Okay. You want some of it? Well, I don't have a sip of this stuff. Um, only because if I go back and think of these, I've done some really bad movies with characters that could have been cool that just weren't. But I tried. <laughs> But probably David, because it's just, if anything, the dude, he's really a lot of fun. He's fundamentally a little screwed up. But aren't we all? Yeah. 